In the world of rock and roll, the guitar riff stands supreme as the single most essential element, the driving force, if you will, of the entire genre. And because of this, over the years, we've seen list after list of the greatest guitar riffs of all time. And guess what? We got a new one. Just a few months ago, Guitar World magazine released their Reader's Poll Top 50 Guitar Riffs Ever. And today, I'm going to go over the top 10. Now, their top 10 certainly had a few head scratchers, in my opinion, and it doesn't exactly match what I would have gone with. That being said, today's video is not an editorial opinion video, but rather, I am simply the messenger. My name is Anthony Parker. This is the Near Life Experience. My goal is to inspire you to pick up that guitar at any cost. Now, if you like what I'm doing, I'd like to take a moment to ask you to support the channel. The best way to do so is to join the Near Life Experience Patreon community. And guess what? you're going to get access to a lot of exclusive content, mostly in the form of more in-depth guitar instruction tutorials. So without further ado, sit back, relax, or even better, get out your guitars and play along because I'm about to go over the top 10 guitar riffs in rock and roll history based on the Guitar World magazine's Reader's Poll. Coming in at number 10 is a guitar riff that was created by one of the most seminal guitarists in rock and roll history. A man whose playing changed the direction of rock, adding his signature fuzz to the mix. Now, contrary to popular opinion, the song was not named after lysergic acid diethylamide, but rather the title came from a science fiction novel by Philip Jose Farmer called Night of Light, which describes a purplish haze that had a disorienting effect on the inhabitants of an alien planet. You guessed it, number 10 is Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Riff number nine from the Guitar World Reader's Poll comes from a song written about a brothel on the outskirts of a certain city in Texas. Now, this must have been a pretty popular place because it was also the subject of a Broadway play turned Hollywood movie starring none other than Dolly Parton. If you don't already know what the song is, here's one more little hint. A ha 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 ha. <laughs> That's right, one of the greatest songs ever written by the long bearded men of ZZ Top, LaGrange. Riff number eight is the very first bona fide thrash metal song to make it on this list. Dimebag Daryl, may he rest in peace, busted out with this riff during the sound check of one of the band's songs on their Cowboys from Hell tour. The rest of the band absolutely loved it, and it would go on to become one of Pantera's most recognizable songs of all time, Walk. <laughs> Riff number seven on the Guitar World Reader's Poll was written by a guitarist who wore homemade thimbles on two of his fingers because the tips were chopped off in an industrial accident. And this riff kind of came out of nowhere while the drummer was playing a rhythm to depict the feel of someone creeping up on you. After hearing the riff, the lead singer said it sounded like a big iron bloke walking around. And thus, the song was originally called Iron Bloke, but would eventually be released under the name Iron Man and become synonymous with the band Black Sabbath. <laughs> Thank you. 
Riff number six is one that has fans of the band split into two factions. On the one hand, you have the masses who first really discovered this great heavy metal band from the song in question. And on the other hand, you have the longtime fans who kind of look at this song and the album, in fact, as being the beginning of the end of this band's greatness. The song written by the band who had metal in their name, Enter Sandman by Metallica. <laughs> Next, we have riff number five. This one was written by another one of rock and roll's most iconic and prolific guitarists. The man who's often referred to by just his three initials wrote this particular hit kind of as a punk rock parody song. You know, just two chords kind of going back and forth. In fact, he didn't even really think it was good enough for his band to play. But thankfully, Eddie Van Halen changed his tune and him and his band turned Ain't Talking About Love into one of their greatest hits. <laughs> Number four is a riff that comes from a song that is often one of the first songs that fledgling guitarists learn how to play. The riff sets a backdrop for a wild tale involving a casino, a massive fire, and a long ordeal involving the great Deep Purple and their attempts to write their seminal album, Machine Head. We all went down to Montro and witnessed Smoke on the Water. <laughs> The number three greatest riff of all time, according to the Guitar World Reader's Poll, is a classic that served as the title track on one of rock's great albums. This album came out at a major turning point for a certain group of boys from Australia, as they had recently lost their lead singer to alcohol poisoning. The song Back in Black was an anthem that they created to celebrate ACDC's triumphant return. Number two in our countdown is a riff that needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce it anyway. After being kicked out of his rock and roll band, which was a heavy metal pioneer at the apex of their fame, this eccentric lead singer found new life by collaborating with the guitar player from Quiet Riot. That guitarist, the late great Randy Rhodes, was the creative force behind the creation of Blizzard of Oz, the album that launched Ozzy Osbourne's solo career. And the song Crazy Train has since cemented itself in the pantheon of rock and roll and pop culture. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the number one guitar riff according to the Guitar World Magazine's Reader's Poll. But this time I'm not going to leave you in suspense because I have a few things I want to say about this riff. I don't even really consider Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin to be their greatest riff ever. More importantly, however, is the fact that you have probably been playing a whole lot of love wrong all this time. I only learned to play the riff correctly myself recently from a video put out there by none other than Joe Walsh. So this is probably how you're playing 
displaying whole lot of love. <laughs> But as Joe Walsh so eloquently points out in his little short video that's been going around the internet, he's bending this fifth fret, fifth string note upwards while simultaneously playing the open D string. Like that, so. That's how he gets that particularly distinctive sound. You put it all together and this is what you got.